Good afternoon, everybody. I am Shahindip Shah, and today I am going to present our talk, Divided We Stand, United We Fall, Security Analysis of Some SCA CIFA Countermeasures Against SCA Enhanced Fall Template Attack. This is a joint work with Orno Bagh, Dirmanto Zap, Devdeep Mukhobad, and Shivam Basin. Myself, Orno, and Devdeep Mukhobadhyay are from Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Dirbanto Zap and Shivam Basin are from Nanian Technological University, Singapore. Crypto implementation is real life leak sensitive information, pretty well known till now. Uh, among several sources of information leakage, side channels are one of the most prominent ones where the adversary passively observes some physical signals such as electromagnetic radiation or power consumption of the chip. And from there, he tries to derive the secret. In contrast, a fault attack adversary deliberately part of the computation of the chip and from the faulty system responses tries to derive the secret. Countermeasures are there for both of these attacks. And uh, they have been I mean, designed quite orthogonal till date. However, one thing is common, that designing countermeasures for both of these attacks are very tricky and there are several failure stories. Now, we address the question that when both kind of countermeasures are present, can there be adversaries meeting their hands like they can be present together? Now, given modern experimental setups, it is quite feasible and we have also shown that practically in this world, However, this area is relatively less explored. Now, our major concern is that when both countermeasures are present and the adversaries are present simultaneously or they're assisting each other, then what is the picture? What happens to the countermeasure? That is what we address in this work. Now, talking about fault data countermeasures, the main theme is redundancy. In simpler words, I mean, the computation is performed several times. And if the results agree with each other, then only the ciphertext is outputted. Otherwise, it is muted or undermined. So redundancy can be implemented at finer grain, like for every round, for every S-box operation and so. But the main idea is the same for everything. In contrast, Side channel countermeasures tries to randomize the computation in some way so that the side channel signals become uncorrelated with the secret. So one of the most popular one is called masking, which requires fresh randomness for each every execution of the cipher. So the main idea is that we split a secret or sensitive variable into multiple random variables, which we call as shares such that the XOR sum of shares gives you, gives you back the actual variable. The function which works over these shares are also separated into several component functions, such that their operation over the shares, if you combine them, you get the exact result. Now, such splitting of function is kind of trivial for linear function, thanks to the linear properties. However, for nonlinear function, it is very tricky and error prone. And over the years, people have figured out several ways for doing a proper sharing, lightweight and secure one for nonlinear function. There are other tricks like hiding shuffling where randomly the program sequence is altered without changing the end result. But in this talk, we'll be mainly focusing on masking and with no doubt, masking is the most prominent one in a side channel countermeasure. Now, since 2018, there has been some breakthrough results in the context of fault attacks. So which basically makes all the countermeasures vulnerable to attack. So more precisely, we are talking about ineffective faults. So what is an ineffective fault? Let's take an example. Say I'm injecting a fault in a four bit state or more precisely a bit stuck at fault, stuck at zero fault at the first bit of the four bit state. Now, if I consider all possible valuations, we see that for first eight valuation, the fault has no impact on the output. So even if you are injecting the fault, you'll get correct cipher. Now, one of the most prominent attacks for statistical ineffective fault analysis exploit this fact, and it can extract the key from the correct cipher. 
the fact given that if you just consider the correct cyphertic space, the intermediate value you are injecting fault gets biased. It only takes seven values or eight values among all possible valuations. So this bias helps in recovering the key. In contrast, FT attack, which has been published in 2020 Eurocrypt, is slightly different. First of all, it is the first case of profile attack in the context of fault analysis. And it exploits the fact that fault propagation through logic gates is data dependent. That is, whether the fault will propagate to the output of the gate or not depends on the inputs of the gate. And this fact actually helps to recover the secret without any ciphertext access. You just need to know whether the fault is there in the ciphertext or not, just on one bit of information. Now, one fact is common for both of these countermeasures that the bypass all existing fault data countermeasures as well as countermeasures which are which combines fault data counter, countermeasure with site channel data countermeasure. Fortunately, since 2020, we are observing significant research in countermeasure development to prevent these attacks, especially the CIFA. The first proposals consider fine gain error correction, I mean, for part share level along with masking. There is another solution which consider to implement the mask gates using Toffoli gates uh, so that some advantages are gained. We'll discuss this countermeasures later in this talk in more detail. But here we're going to focus that most of the fault attack uh, CIFA countermeasures actually involve masking because masking has some advantages over CIFA. And also it involves some error correction or detection operation. So there is a complex interaction between an SCA countermeasure masking and the fault attack, standard fault attack countermeasures here. Now, since there are both countermeasures present, so our aim is to see whether this stands against a combined adversary or we need to do something extra. So in this regard, our finding says that we, are, we have still to do something more to prevent all these attacks. More precisely, we propose a CFT attack, which actually breaks certain existing CIFA countermeasures. Moreover, it exposes few intricacies associated with masking while realizing CIFA countermeasures. Like FT attack, it enables middle round attacks without ciphertext access or direct access to plane. So let's see what is SCFTA. So it is a template attack or profile technique and has similarities with fault template attack as well as side channel template attack. So the adversary is assumed to have access to a device for which he knows the key and randomness. He injects faults at different locations and simultaneously measure the side channel signal. Now, combining the side channel signals for several fault locations, he actually creates a template which indicates what is the intermediate state like this. Upon getting a new setup where the key is unknown, he deliberately parts those locations which he have previously decided, of course, one at a time, measures the side channel signal, and from there extract the secret. Now, the model is similar to FTA, or we can also call it similar to standard classical uh, side channel template attack. But the gain is that over FTA, that FTA only exploits the fact whether the cybertex is correct or faulty, typically in one bit information. But here, due to side channel, you get something more, and that actually becomes crucial for breaking CIFA countermeasures. Now, how we build this template? So we exploit the interaction between fault propagation and error detection. So as I mentioned, fault propagation and activation through gates are data dependent. So if you consider an XOR gate and a stack at zero fault, the outcome is only faulted if the fault location contains the value one. For AND gate, even if the value is one, the fault may not propagate because it depends on the other input. If the other input is also one, you see a fault propagation. So if you see that there is a fault propagation at the output of this gate, you surely know that the inputs are one and one for a 22 gate. Now, how can we see the fault propagation? So if there is some circuitry which actually reacts in the fault propagation, then there is a chance that it will detect 
whether the fault is propagating or not, and that will lead to some effective side channel information. And this is what error correction or detection module does in fault attack or side channel attack. Now let's take a more prominent example. Here we consider a three-bit S box due to Kchak, Chudu, et cetera. And we are injecting a fault at X0. Now we see the fault mandatorily propagates to Y0 every time. But the propagation to Y1 and Y2 are conditional on the input values. Now, given this fact, we see that the, if we observe the fault propagation or fault differential at the output of this S box, it exposes the input. And the main fact is that we cannot directly observe such fault propagation in all practical cases when you have countermeasures, right? So for that, if we use a side channel, we still can do the attack because side channel, although uh, I mean, it abstracts the information from a Hamming wave, so it loses some information, but still there is some entropy loss in this intermediate state or the input of the S box. So that can be exploited for attack. Let's see a more concrete example here. Here we consider the present S box. It's a four bit S box. And we excite each of the bits one at a time with faults and measure the output signal from an error detection circuit. This is quite common because present at a bit permutation. Now, observing them and measuring the side channel leakage, we can construct a uh, template of this kind. Here we have abstracted the side channel signals using Hamming weight, which is noise free, but actual experiment has been performed considering both fault injection noise as well as side channel noise. And we see that the state, intermediate state of present can be exposed roughly with 11,000 traces and fault injection. Now, this one was an unprotected, side channel unprotected version of present and only FA protection was present. Now, let's see what happens when masking in present. Now, the scenario becomes quite interesting because now you can also mask the error detection logic. So, directly from the error detection logic, you are not supposed to get any information, but still we get some information, at least for some specific masking scheme. We consider here domain-oriented masking. Now let's see what happens if we inject a fault at A0. Now since we inject a fault at A0, it exposes the information of B because it's only propagated to Q0 when B is one. Now interesting fact is that it only propagates to Q1 and not the other share Q1 of the DOM gate. Now, when considering an SC attack, we always have to think about the order of the leakage because this is what we are considering here is a first order implementation. So if we uh, consider a second order SC attack on that, that is not efficient, right? But fortunately, due to the fault propagation, if we just probe the error detection logic of Q0, we are good. We are still exposing the information of B and that is the first order attack. So, the attack is efficient and with just a fault and a fast order side channel leakage, we can expose the information from a, this kind of construction. Interestingly, this also applies to modern DOM-based or ISW-based schemes like PINI. And it is not limited to the fast order case only. Even for any higher order, you can still do a fast order attack because the fault propagation is something like this. So there's a clear vulnerability. Now let's consider a situation when there is error correction on the shared values in a bit level manner. Now, why are you considering this? Because this has been crucial in developing some recent CIFA countermeasures. So here we consider shared level error correction. For each share, there is some error correction. Now we see that we can see if you consider this kind of error correction logic, then when the encoding is perfect, that there is no error then some of the intermediates were toggles randomly, with no doubt. But whenever there is an error, such that this bit becomes zero or this bit becomes one, these intermediate words stuck to zero. So there is a clear difference between a faulty and non-faulty situation, and that leaks the side channel information, which leads to an attack. Now let's see what happens for a CIFA countermeasure. We considered the CIFA countermeasure published in features 2020, which uses Toffoli gates. The exciting feature of this countermeasure is that whenever you inject a fault within the S box operation or outside of the S box operation, the fault mandatorily propagates to the output. 
But the tricky part is that the mandatory fault propagation is valid only for one output wire here shown in red. But for the rest of the wires, the propagation is still ineffective. So if we consider an error, card, error detection circuit at the end, which is working on the shared values or which is working on the unshared values, it still can leak some circuit. So considering the case that the error correction happening on shares, we see that due to the DOM-based construction of this SBOX, this error detection logic on S0 still leaks information about A because it, it propagates to both A0 and A1 simultaneously. And that completely breaks this confirmation. Now, if we consider error correction on shares with the logic that we have previously discussed, it still leaks the information. Now, this kind of proposal has been made in countermeasures in published in TIPS 2020, where they propose that masking an error correction on each share is good enough for C propagation. Here we found that it might be true, but not for every masking scheme, especially if you have a DOM-based masking thing, then you are not good. Now, does this only applies to DOM and ISW variants? No, the answer is no. So we see that for higher order TIs, the case still persists. So here the main problem is the share compression step, which is always applied to reduce the blow up in share counts. Now due to share compression, we can still do the attack. For example, if you consider this Simon S box, which is second order secure, and if you inject a fault at A4 share and probe the error detection logic of E3 and E4, we leak the information of B. Now, this is a second order implementation and we are still doing a second order attack and the attack is efficient. So it means that even for higher order TI, we can apply our attack very efficiently. We practically validated this attack on an Atmega board with an open source CIFAR protected KHAC implementation present in this link. This is due to the TOEFL get based implementation. We perform laser fault injection with 8 watt diode laser and power measurement was done for SCA. We tested unshared and shared detection operation in this experiment. So one interesting feature of this experiment is that, or what you observed here is that, we do not need to measure a laser injection, um, perform the laser injection and measure the side chain in the same clock cycle. So for software implementations, the injection point and the side channel measurement points are several clock cycle hit. So what's the advantage of that? We do not need to face the noise due to laser injection on the side channel traces. The side channel traces are fairly clear and we see around 200 to 300 operations in both of the cases, we can recover each peak. So for each peak, we need this many number of traces of fault injection, but eventually we can recover the entire secret. In another experiment, we do a simulated evaluation on hardware setup, but we, it's worth mentioning that the setup that we have discussed previously can also be tuned for hardware systems, especially for some cases. But in this experiment specifically, we have simulated the faults and the power stress leakage, but the main stress was given that whether with adjacent gate leakages, can we still discover the side channel signal that we're looking for? The answer is yes. And we see that roughly with thousand traces, considering all kinds of noises that is present inside channel, we can still recover the secret bits. Now, there are still some ray of hope. We found that the countermeasure instantiation that has been made in the masking plus error correction based proposal is still secure. And here we see the non completeness property of TI plays a crucial role. So more precisely, if we do error detection and correction of a non-complete path, then we can still maintain the security. Here is an example for first order TI of present. So I've just considered a part of the present S-box implementation. Now, if we inject a fault here at X20, we can still recover X2. But if we are doing error detection and correction on shares, then we have a problem. Because the error propagation always happens to F10 and F30. So unless we do a second order attack, we cannot combine the information, we cannot extract X2 in this manner. So given a fault and a first order side channel adversary, 
which is that should be the case here because we are considering a faster asset channel secure implementation. We are good. We cannot do that. Job. And in this line of work, the uh, other proposal, which is pretty similar, is called Nina, which also performs error correction on shares. That is also found to be secure. Another class of works, such as Kappa, is found to be secure against this combined ACFT attack because it performs multi-party computation-based uh, masking, and it is fairly different than any other Boolean masking scheme that we have considering so far. But we found that it's still secure. So to conclude, combined attacks are practical and should be considered for implementations having both fault attack and side chain attack countermeasures. Now, we found that having both countermeasures doesn't mean that you have security for a combined attack. And we show a very potent combined adversary for the scenario, which is extremely powerful. It's worth mentioning that we have cons just considered the countermeasure cases, but SCFT might apply to other scenarios like for public implementations or other kind of implementations such as modes of operation. Surprisingly, it breaks CIFA countermeasures and exposes certain critical properties of masking schemes, which are implemented to develop CIFA countermeasures. As potential future work, we'd like to analyze multi-party based schemes like Kappa and some other schemes, because it's not yet clear whether how this attack applies to the schemes, but there is no sign that it won't apply as well. Also, finding lightweight countermeasure is an important research direction because so far, whatever countermeasures we have seen, requires a lot of error detection and correction operations. So if we can reduce that overhead, that will be a real gain. So with this message, I would like to conclude my talk. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.